If you're going to scrape some information, then it's likely you're going to need to use lists. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about how lists are used in scraping. I'm going to talk specifically about how to generate a list of URLs to scrape, for example, and also the difference between two broad approaches to scraping, um, what you might call one stage and two stage scraping. First of all then, lists. Um, basically, when you're going to scrape more than one web page or a number of different documents, you're going to need a list of the addresses of those web pages or documents. You're going to need a list of URLs. You can also use a list of numbers if you're going to generate some URLs. For example, it's quite often the case in scraping that you need to scrape a number of different pages, so page one, page two, and so on, for it might be dozens or hundreds of different pages. Another situation that you frequently encounter in scraping is where you might have a number of different web pages that use different place names or different categories, but the rest of the URL is the same. And again, if you've got a list of those words, you can generate the URLs that you need to scrape by going through a list of those words. Here's one very simple example. This is a list of URLs. These are the URLs of different news articles. If we wanted to scrape a number of different news articles and extract data from those, for example, the headline, the uh, author, the first sentence, then we would need to go through a list of URLs like this. Here's another example. At the top here, we have a list of counties, Avon, Dorset, and Essex. And just by having that list of counties, we can generate URLs for each of those counties on a particular website. So in this case, the ukgokarting.com website has data on different tracks in each of those counties. And the URL is exactly the same apart from the last part, which changes for each county. So if we've got a list of those, we can generate those URLs to scrape those. And the third example is when you might have a list of numbers and use that list of numbers to generate um, URLs for different page numbers. Or indeed, they might be ID cards which uh, go up by one each time and you might generate a list of those to scrape pages for each ID number. When you have a list like this, what happens with the scraper is that you then... Um, create some code to extract information from those URLs and you run that code for as many times as there are items in a list. This diagram shows you that process uh, in practice. On the left you've got the different web pages. You might see that, uh, that list on the left as, as the list of URLs of different web pages. The scraping code then goes through each of those items in the list, each of those web pages, and in this example here, it's extracting a name. So we've got Mo and Jane and Paul and Addy and Jazz. And then on the right, we've got a pass or fail mark on each of those pages. So on page one, for example, the name is Mo and the grade is pass. On page two, the name is Jane and the grade is fail and so on. So that list is then converted into some data through the process of scraping. In this presentation, I just want to focus on that concept of lists and how they are used in scraping. In later presentations, we'll come on to the actual scraping code that's applied to each of those pages. Once it's looped through all of those different items in a list and extracted data from each of those URLs, then it can compile a table of the resulting data. Now, I mentioned earlier about the difference between one-stage scraping and two-stage scraping. This is to do with where the list comes from. We've talked about a couple of examples where you might generate the list through a series of numbers or words, or where you already have a list of URLs to scrape. In this case, the scraping uh, only has one stage to it. You create the scraping code and you run that code against the list that you have compiled or generated. However, sometimes you don't have the list yourself and you need to actually scrape the list to begin with. In other words, you might have 
for example, a page which links to lots of other pages. And uh, all of those links are, are effectively a list that you need to compile. In this case, we have what's called a two-stage scraper. In the first stage, you have to write a scraper to actually scrape the list to begin with. So you don't have that list, you need to write a scraper to grab all of those URLs. The second stage then is when, once you've scraped that list, you write another scraper, which goes through all of those URLs and scrapes information from those. So some projects you will have the list of URLs to begin with, and that's a one stage scraping project. In other situations, you might need to write two scrapers, one to grab the list in the first place, or compile it and another one to actually scrape the information from those. Now, at this point, we need to turn our attention to the coding and Google Colab. Google Colab is the tool that I'm going to use to demonstrate some of these techniques. So I'm going to move um, to this in another uh, presentation. But first of all, to get to Google Colab, uh, the quickest way is to make sure that you're logged on to Google Drive and then go to this address, colab.research.google.com. When you go to that address, if you're logged into Google Drive, then a window will open showing any um, Google Colab Python notebooks that you have. And you won't have any unless you've used it before, but this is where you can start to create your own Python notebooks to write Python code and create scrapers, among other things. To do that, you need to click on the new notebook option in the bottom right corner of the screen, and this will open up a new blank Python notebook. Now, I'll pick that up in another presentation. You'll find on the repo for this uh, module in the Python folder, a guide to getting used to basic programming concepts by using Google Colab, and that, that itself is actually a Python notebook, and that will take you through some of the processes we're about to go through, as well as some of the other links here as well. But the key points to sum up from this presentation are these. First of all, um, I just want you to be aware of the concept of lists and how they are used in scraping to store a list of URLs that you need to scrape. Secondly, the fact that we use lists by looping through the items in that list in Python or indeed in other programming languages. And as we go through that list, as we loop through it, then we use each item with some separate code, some scraping code that we'll come on to. And finally, the idea that Google Colab is a particularly useful tool, a place to write Python and create scrapers in Google Drive. The advantage of this is that you don't need to set up Python on your computer or go through any of those steps. Um, the environment is created for you on Google's own servers and you can write notebooks and share code there. So I'll pick up the rest of this in the next presentation on getting started coding in Python.